This is Jake with Van Dyke Software, and I'm going to show you how to use SecureCRT to connect to a machine behind a bastion host or a jump host using SecureCRT's dependent session feature. A common networking problem is that you have hosts you need to reach, but can only do so from a jump host or a bastion server. If your jump host or bastion server is an SSH2 server that supports port forwarding, SecureCRT makes it really easy to reach those secondary hosts behind the bastion server. The first step is to create a SecureCRT session to your jump host. The next step is to create a session to a secondary host. This new session uses the jump host session as its proxy. SecureCRT dynamically makes a request to the jump host, asking it to forward your connection onto the secondary host. Once you have your jump host session in place, you can use it to connect to any allowed host on the secondary network. Now that you have an overview of what we're trying to accomplish, I'll show you how this is configured in SecureCRT. So I've got a fresh install of SecureCRT here. First, I'll use Quick Connect to set up a connection to my jump host. My jump host's network name happens to be jump host. I put in my username and I make sure that this ad hoc connection will get saved to my session manager so that I can reuse it later. It's not a security best practice to save passwords, but for the purpose of demonstrating the dependent feature capability in SecureCRT, I'll save the password to my jump host session so that you can see how seamless connecting to any of these secondary hosts can be. I'm now connected to the jump host. I'm gonna close the connection and open it from my saved sessions again. What this does is gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling to know that everything is configured to allow that connection to succeed without any more interaction from me than is necessary. Next, I'm going to create a connection to one of the secondary hosts behind the jump server. In my case, the name of that server, as it's known on the secondary network and to the jump host server, more importantly, is SecHost1. I put that in as the host name and set the username and now comes the magic. Here in this firewall setting, there's an entry for select session. I select that and specify the jump host session that I created earlier. When I connect, I'm prompted for the password to the secondary host, meaning SecureCRT has automatically connected to the jump host server behind the scenes and asked the jump host server to forward the connection onto the secondary host. For the sake of convenience for this video, I'll opt to save the password, and now I'm connected to the secondary host. Let's repeat this process for the next secondary host, SecHost2. You see, as long as I keep SecureCRT running, it remembers the Quick Connect state from the last time it was used. I type in my password, and I'm connected to secondary host 2. And let's do the third one. And type in my password. Now I'm connected to secondary host 3. And so at this point, I've used my jump host session as the proxy to create connections to these three devices behind the Gateway SSH server. Well, that's my primer on how to use SecureCRT's dependent session feature. Stay secure, my friends.